Hi, I'm George, and we'll be giving this portrait a studio background look by using a pattern fill layer. Now, if you like this video, make sure you hit that like button. Don't forget to share and also subscribe. When you subscribe, hit that bell icon for notifications of my new videos, and take a look at my complete training course for Photoshop Elements. There's a link for that right down there in the description. Okay, let's get to it. Here's the original picture that we'll be using to put in that new studio look background. And the first thing we need to do is to crop this into a nice vertical 8x10 portrait size. So I'll use the crop tool right over here. And I have mine set at 8x10, that's the bottom option. You can go from horizontal to vertical by using this little button right there. There's our vertical setting. You can then move this around to get it just where you want, but I think that's pretty good right there. Choose OK, green check mark. That then crops the image to that setting. So it's now a nice 8x10. Okay, we'll go back up here. Now we need to separate the girl out from the background, which will let us put a new background in behind her. And for this, I'll use my standard technique, which is just to grab the lasso tool right there and then make a lasso and then use the refine edge to clean that up. I'm going to zoom in a little bit first here. There we are. It's pretty good, about like that. A little bit too close. There it is. And then using that lasso tool, I'll just make a nice quick little lasso right around the figure here. You can move the image by holding the space bar down and then pulling the image and then let go. Keep your finger down on the mouse button when you do that so that that selection stays active. And then just make a nice little selection right around the figure. It doesn't need to be clean or exact or anything. We'll clean that all up with the refine edge tool. Okay, back to our beginning point. There we go and then refine edge. Now I have mine normally set at smart radius. The brush size is right over here, 35, and that looks pretty good for this, and I have my view set with the overlay, which is just easy to use. And then I'll start out and then work in a little bit. So just kind of a couple of strokes just like that, out and then in, and that usually gives you a very nice edge. If you have to go over it a few more times, that's fine, but this one should clean up pretty quickly. And then hold the space bar down and you can move the picture to get the part that's just outside of the screen there. There we are. Let's go ahead and finish the other side here. And then we'll use this to give us our new layer with a clean background. Okay, just finish this up. Now when you're working with a dark background like we had in this picture, you want to be going for a replacement dark background. If you have a light background or a white background, then you want to have a light replacement background. If you do that, that's going to help reduce any chance of there being any haloing around the edge. So you want to be using a background that's kind of somewhat similar in value to the original background. So we have a dark background, we'll be placing that with a dark background. Okay, let's go ahead and set this at new layer with layer mask right there, choose OK. And there we go, we've now removed that background. It's a little bit messy right down in here. You can clean that up if you want to, easy way is to go over here, click on the right hand side, this is your layer mask side, grab this tool right there, and that is the burn tool, and then just come in and go over that area a little bit with the burn tool. What that does is it darkens down the layer mask at that point, just kind of cleans things up. You know, a little bit of that right around the edge here, and that gets rid of a little bit of that ghosting effect that we have in there doesn't take much. It's going to be a dark background anyway. Okay, that's good. Let's put her back at full screen. There it is. Now come down to the background layer. It should be hidden at this point, and that's perfect. And then I'll change to the Move tool, and then go up to Layer, and come down to New Fill Layer, and Pattern right there. And then choose OK. And that brings up the Pattern Fill. Now there are lots of options in here. The default will look like this. You have some kind of strange background in behind it like that. All kinds of weird, bizarre things but that's not what we're going for here. So let's change the patterns here up here to color paper right there. And there are lots of options in here. Notice some of these are dark like that, and this one, this one, this one. These are better if your original background is dark. If your original background is light, then I would use one of these lighter backgrounds. That's just gonna help things to blend in. We'll be using this one right there. There it is, that's a nice looking background. But it's real easy to see that repeating pattern in there. Let's fix that by going here where it says scale and just pulling this up a bit. 
and they can scale that larger until that repeating pattern is kind of hidden. And that looks pretty nice. Kind of a rough pattern in there. Choose OK. So there's our pattern in behind our portrait. Now I want to darken the edges of this down a little bit. But to do that, we need to come over here and convert this to a regular graphics layer. Now I want to save this in case I want to change the background in the future. So where it says pattern, right click there and let's duplicate that layer and choose OK. And then hide the original one. And then again, right click where it says pattern and this time simplify layer and that converts this into just a graphic layer. Okay, now we can apply a new effect on this. Go up here to filter, come down to correct camera distortion right there. And up here we have vignette and your top slider, just move this to the left a bit and you can then come in and darken down your corners. There we are. There's all the way to the edge, up a little bit. You can choose how much darkening you want. I'm gonna have just you know, most of the way here, about 75, 76 or so, looks pretty good. Choose okay. That darkens the edges down, which gives it a real nice look. Okay, let's go back up here to our image. Now I think that she's a bit too cool in here. I want to brighten her up and warm her up a little bit. We'll do that with some layer adjustments. So layer, come down to new adjustment layer. Let's start off with levels, where it says use previous layer to create clipping mask. Make sure that, that is checked. Choose OK. And in here, we can lighten or darken the image like that. I'm going to darken it down just a little bit. The one I used was 0.86. It's so just a little bit richer that way. And then let's lighten the brights up a bit on the right hand side here. And the one that I used on this was a 238. So I'll just type that in. 238. There we go. And close that down. Let's now warm her up. Back up to layer. Come down to New Adjustment Layer and this time use a Photo Filter. And again where it says Use Previous Layer to Create Clipping Mask, make sure that is checked. Choose OK. And the default one is always the Warming Filter 85 and that's exactly what we want to use here. You can then warm her up by pulling this over to the right hand side. Now the amount that I used was 56. So I'll just kind of pull it up like that. There we go. 56%. And that warms her figure up quite a bit. Now one problem with this is that it also warmed up the blue hair. So if I hide and then show that, see how the, we lost that whole blue hair effect? I want to bring that back and we can do that by masking out this filter on its layer mask. Now white shows, black hides, so make sure your black is your foreground color. Grab your paintbrush and then using, you can see right there, using a nice little brush size. I like having mine with a soft edge. Make sure you're on that layer mask side and then just paint right on top of that layer mask. You can then hide that filter just by painting onto that layer mask. So let's go around and come in here and just kind of paint out that filter. Just be careful on the edges here. And as soon as that's done, then the picture will be finished. Looks pretty good. And it's up around the top side here. And a little bit too far on that one, I'll use a Control Z to back up a couple of steps. There we go. And let's work around this side and get this bit of the hair. And there it is. We've now brought the hair back to the original color. We've warmed her skin up, fixed her complexion a bit here. I brightened things up and added in our new studio background. Let's now see this compares. I'll take the original background down here, right click and duplicate layer, choose OK. I'll drag that to the top. There it is. It's hidden right now. Let's go ahead and show that. There's the original and there's our new background. So actually very easy to do. Just taking an outdoor shot and then converting that to an indoor studio shot and just using that new fill layer over here, we're able to get lots of options for changing the background. Now we're just doing this as kind of a studio look, but there's a ton of stuff in here. Let me just hide that studio layer. I'll bring back the original one. Again, this is why I like to keep that layer protected. Double click on the filter side here. It brings back up your control. You can then go back and change your pattern to something else if you want to try a different look. And again, there are lots and lots and lots of different looks in here. Lots of different effects you can play around with. And that's just on the color paper. We have artistic surfaces in here, mostly black and white stuff. Grayscale paper effects. All kinds of interesting, strange things in here. Nature patterns. And we have pattern two stuff. Some weird effects in there. These are the default patterns. Really strange, bizarre things in there. And some rocky patterns. There we go. And two different texture fill sets down here. So as you can see, just loads and loads and loads of stuff that you can use. With these texture fills, they're all black and white, but you can always put a color layer above that and then blend that color layer into this layer by using the layer control up here, the blend mode, 
and coming down using the color blend right there. Okay, I'll hide that, bring this one back up again. So there it is. Let's just bring her out here and get this just a little bit larger, easier to see this way. Go to the zoom tool and we'll zoom in just a bit. And there we go. That's taking a regular outdoor photograph and then converting that so it looks like it was taken in a studio with a nice clean studio background. Now if you like this video, make sure you hit that like button. Don't forget to share. Don't forget to subscribe. And definitely take a look at my complete training course for Photoshop Elements. And there's a link for that right down there in the description. Alright, and I'll see you next time.